Asian observers of Australia would be wondering, despite our strong economy and strong trade links with Asia, about our political situation. It is true that in Australia we have elections every three years, but most of our journalists and other political observers are often kept entertained by leadership tussles that we have within parties themselves. This year, we've had the former Prime Minister, uh, the Australian Foreign Minister, Kevin Rudd, mounting the challenge to the sitting Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, who herself replaced him in 2010, uh, before the last federal election. To many observers, this seems unusual. Australia has a low unemployment rate, low inflation, is growing strongly. It has an economic performance that is the envy of the industrialised world and in fact our strong links to Asia has ensured that we've had a very strong economy. When I think about different economies in Asia and elsewhere, I think about their different political systems and elections too. But when I think about my own country, I don't really have to travel very far at all. When I've been looking at the recent leadership tussle and the forthcoming election that will happen in the next 18 months, I think about the Australian electorate as I walk through Sydney Airport. In fact, the whole Australian constituency can be thought of in terms of three airport terminals at Sydney Airport. The most important terminal that I use is, is the international terminal, which is Terminal 1. Now, people that go to the international terminal are made up of two groups. There's corporate business travellers, of course, that are exporting and investing throughout Asia and the rest of the world. That group uh, tends to be coalition or conservative voters with some Labor and increasingly some Green. They tend to spend most of their time in the Qantas Club or in other business lounges with Cathay Pacific or Singapore Air. And for the most part, they are pretty much plugged in to the Conservative and, to some extent, Labor and Green side of the political spectrum. Increasingly, too, we've seen more young people travelling around the world and more income groups in Australia now travelling due to the high Australian dollar and also lower, uh, lower airline costs due to more competition in the airline industry in Asia. These groups traditionally have been Labor voters, but as airline travel has become more accessible to more income groups, there tends to be more of a mixture across that constituency. But importantly, in the international terminal, there are people that are migrants to Australia. One in four Australians are born overseas. And when you look at airline travel, many people that go through Sydney Airport, the international terminal, are migrants picking up family members, returning to their homeland, or even uh, themselves visiting uh, their own home countries for business or for family reasons. Now, the migrant constituency in Australia, which makes up one in four Australians, has always been a very much a strong supporter of the Labor Party and therefore the current government. This means that any statements that says we don't want a big Australia could quite remarkably offend this group. Also, at the international terminal, the people that carry people's bags, pack them, check people in at the airport, drive the taxis, check people into the hotels, tend to be people born overseas. In addition, many people working in the hospitality and travel industry are students themselves, many from other countries. This group has traditionally been Labor, but statements that were made at the last election could actually put this group up for grabs as well. For most part of Australia's recent history, they've been a very loyal constituency for the Labor Party and the current government. Terminal 2 is principally the terminal that looks after regional Australia. They have, at this, this terminal, flights to Wagga, to Tamworth. Uh, they have flights to some regional cities throughout Australia. A lot of uh, people that travel in this terminal are fly and fly out workers to Australia's mines. And in addition, there's a group of Australians that tend to be self-employed, uh, tradies as we say in Australia, subcontractors, They've traditionally been blue-collar, working-class voters for Labor. They would have voted for the former Prime Minister Bob Hawke and Paul Keating in the 1980s and 90s. But increasingly, they've been a group that has been moving towards the coalition under former Prime Minister John Howard and increasingly under the opposition leader, Tony Abbott. 
This group is probably the key constituency in the next election. A lot of people who will travel uh, on Virgin or Jetstar to the Gold Coast or to regional Australia to work or to holiday internally in Australia are from Western Sydney, uh, the Shire, southern suburbs of Sydney and also from regional towns and cities around Australia. Terminal 2 will be a key battleground at the next election. Finally, Terminal 3 is the business travellers terminal, principally for Qantas. These are people that travel regularly around Australia and they're similarly members of the Qantas Club uh, as are the international corporate travellers that you'll see in the international terminal. Now this group has traditionally been liberal or, or conservative as we, uh, as we call the Liberal Party in Australia, but more socially liberal, more inclined to support Malcolm Turnbull, who's a socially liberal frontbencher in Australia, the former leader of the Republican movement here in Australia, more so than Tony Abbott, who's a more conservative leader within the Liberal Party. This group would also get some support from the Greens and Labor. For the most part, though, it's a small group of elite Australians that travel around the country for business. So, in summary, the election will be fought on three battlegrounds. The international terminal, mainly migrant Australians are still Labor, but comments that, that we don't believe in a, in a big Australia could affect that constituency. Secondly, Terminal 2. These are, uh, again, the so-called Howard or Abbott battlers who once voted Labor, who are now increasingly turning to the coalition. If the government wants to win the election, they have to appeal to people in this terminal. It's a key battleground. And finally, Terminal 3, Qantas business class, still predominantly uh, conservative, but of a social liberal variety uh, between that group, the Greens and Labor. So I expect that Terminal 2 will be where the next election is fought on. Most uh, pundits in Australia will look at electorates, will look at demographics. I actually think the airport terminal view of the Australian electorate is a nice simple way of segmenting the Australian electorate as we look towards the election in 2013. The Prime Minister Julia Gillard won a resounding victory over the former Foreign Minister Kevin Rudd in the ballot this year. Julia Gillard is not as well known in Asia as Kevin Rudd. Kevin Rudd's language uh, skills in Mandarin and constant travelling throughout the region has made him very well known. Julia Gillard was the first head of state to visit Japan after the earthquake, but she is now having to find her feet in terms of foreign policy, in terms of trade policy, as well as her own passions with respect to education. Tony Abbott, the opposition leader, was a very senior health, industrial relations and defence minister in the Howard government. He's not as well known uh, in, in Asia as some other past conservative politicians, so he himself will be keen to lift his profile in Asia as well. Australia does have a strong economy. Uh, to many observers in Asia, you would think that that would ensure that the government would be returned. But Australia is a very different place. We're a lucky country, but when it comes to politics, we're a very different country than a lot of our neighbours.